101 uh, installation protocol. We're happy to have you all joining us today. A uh, little bit about Olander for some of you that uh, don't haven't dealt with us yet. We are a 58-year-old uh, company in the West Coast. We have two locations in California, in Sacramento and Sunnyvale in the Silicon Valley, and also in the uh, Seattle suburb of Woodenville, Washington. And we are the largest stocking distributor of Helicoil in the United States, and we're very pleased with our relationship with Helicoil. We have plenty of stock on the Helicoil inserts, the tooling, and we can provide you with all the technology for any of your installation um, protocol that you need. So without further ado, I want to introduce Carl Erickson and also Ann Salates. Um, Ann is our Southern California Business Development Manager. She's been with us uh, in the faster industry for 14 years. And Carl Erickson has been selling fasteners for over 43 years. And uh, both of them can help you out with any demos in the area. And without further ado, Ann, take it away. Oh, thank you so much, John. Welcome, everyone. Glad you're here. Today, um, we're talking about helicoil installation protocol. Um, and some of the topics we're going to be covering are why helicoil wire inserts? Why use them? We'll also cover most common parent materials for applications. Also, helicoil application requirements. We'll speak on tooling required for properly tapped holes. Also, components required for helicoil insert installation. We'll go over tapped hole gauging prior to insert installation. We also have some installation dues for you and Carl has a great helical factoid, so stay tuned for that. As well as he'll be going over some common installation issues um, and also with that possible causes of those and a solution for each. So stay tuned. Fantastic, man. We also wanna let everybody know that we'll have a poll during the webinar. We'd like your participation. At the end, we'll have a question and answer session where you can submit uh, online uh, in the chat as well, where you can uh, submit any questions. We'll help you out with those. And we'll also have a survey that will go out to uh, all the registered uh, post webinar. If you can take the time, it'll only be a couple questions. Uh, just to make sure you're doing this right and providing good information for everybody. Um, that's it. Um, we'll go ahead and take it away. All right. Thanks, John. So um, to start with a little bit of information about heel coil. Well, heel coil has a portfolio of wire threaded inserts, which include offerings of a variety of configurations, whether it be plating, material, locking or non-locking variants that make it fully adaptable and configurable for configurable. <laughs> for industry spanning automotive, industrial, aerospace, and defense. And um, there's a strong industry trend right now toward the lightening of materials, so reducing the weight in applications, yet achieving structural integrity of the bolted or fastened joint. And helicoil, by nature of its design, is an ideal solution to be incorporated as part of these assemblies. And um, I'm not sure if John mentioned, Olander, we are the largest stocking distributor for helicoil um, components as well as tools. So if you're needing anything, most likely we're going to have it in stock for you. And let's get into some information here for you. Um, so why use helicoil wire inserts? Well, they greatly improve a tapped thread strength in softer parent materials. Also, they offer low unit cost per installation as compared to solid body inserts. They come in a wide variety of materials and sizes, configurations for any application. Also, we have automated tooling, which offers high installation rates per hour. Ease of replacement, they're serviceable. And now, also, uh, natural corrosion resistance when using stainless steel 304 helicoil wire. 
some of the largest heel coil users are aerospace, right? We already talked about the um, reducing weight, um, why, why customers use heel coil. Also semiconductor equipment and medical device. And I'll let John guide us in the poll that we have for um, all the attendees. Thank you, Ann, appreciate it. So we wanna get a little bit of feedback from you as some of the installation issues that you might have experienced and, and uh, this will help us uh, answer some of those for you as well. So what is the most common challenge or issue you've encountered when using helicoil wire inserts? So it's multiple choice. Um, inserts bind while installing or pneumatic tool stops or binds during installation. <laughs> Hangless inserts do not install completely accompanied by a faint ticking sound or tanged inserts disengage from the mandrel and will not install to the full depth required or tool continues to run after the mandrel returns to the retracted position. So we'll be going over these um, issues that have happened. We've heard these things in the past that uh, during some installation and we hope to get some feedback from you. So please make a choice on these. And it seems that the tool continues to run after the mandrel returns to the retracted position is one of the most common choices that people have made. So we'll go over these issues and how to resolve uh, these issues that people might be <laughs> All right. Um, well, thank you for that. And now Carl will take it for a while here. <laughs> thank you, John. Thank you, Ann. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, yeah, we are going to go over some general uh, helicoil wire insert information, as well as the installation tooling available, the proper assembly of that tooling. And mm -hmm. as John mentioned, though, installation issues are, are rare discuss some of the possible uh, causes of those and uh, quick remedies. So let's get started. Acceptable parent materials. Um, there's a several that are most common. Steel and stainless steel are very common. Uh, aluminum, uh, as Ann had mentioned, with the uh, trend toward lightening of assemblies uh, has become very popular, both cast 356 and 6061 T6. The entire family of non-ferrous materials, which means non-metallic in English, uh, both G10 and glass fill variants, um, really any material requiring the maximum thread strength uh, is a great candidate for a helicoil wire insert. And the only condition is that the material chosen must be able to maintain a tapped hole tolerance. Uh, application requirements, short list. Uh, the parent, again, the parent material must be able to hold a tapped hole tolerance. The parent material thickness must exceed the minimum install length of the uh, specified insert, so you don't want them hanging out either end. And you must have accessibility to the tapped hole once the uh, tapping is complete to allow the use of a helicoil installation tool. Yeah, one of the surprises that people don't know is that helicoil can be even used in wood as wood can hold a tolerance. So True. That's great information that I didn't have when I first started learning about helicoil. Okay. Uh, the tooling required for properly tapped holes is a short list, but very important. Um, a uh, fresh drill bit to the helicoil drill, drill size guide. We would recommend Norseman brand. Uh, a fresh STI brand cut tap uh, to, the, to the tap guide as well, a fresh 120 degree countersink, as well as a set of pin gauges to verify the minor diameter after tapping. Carl, why would you want to use an STI tap? STI is a helicoil brand that is specifically designed for use with helicoil inserts. Helicoil wire is diamond shaped and the flute profile of those taps allow that installation to be done properly. Yeah, cut tap versus the roll tap. Yes, you never want to use a roll tap. Always a cut tap, always a helicoil STI brand cut tap. Excellent. Uh, a set of pin gauges, uh, verify again that you've uh, cut a 120 degree countersink at the entrance of the hole. And 
to use the pin gauges to verify the minor diameter of the tap thread. Uh, always tapping to the maximum tolerance of the minor diameter has proven to ease uh, the insert installation greatly. Uh, the components required. Uh, the inserts you've chosen, whether tanged, tangless, free running or locking. Uh, the appropriate installation tool you've chosen, whether it's hand, automated, and that can be electric or pneumatic, or one of the new family of uh, helicoil brushless tools. And if you've chosen a tanged inserts, a tang breakoff tool. And if you're using a pneumatic tool, a clean, dry air source. Helicoil inserts come in a variety of uh, styles, configurations, materials, and platings. A short list would be tanged, tangless, oversized and twin cert, uh, of which I will mention that Olander is the sole authorized distributor for oversized and twin cert inserts in the US. Uh, pipe thread inserts, spark plug repair inserts, primer free coated inserts, spiral lock wire inserts, both tanged and drive notch. Carl, can you go over the uh, twin certs and why we'd use a twin cert and uh, an oversized uh, helicoil insert? Oversized, both the oversized and twin certs are thread repair inserts. Uh, oversized would be used in a situation where the tapped hole is gauging higher than the maximum allowed. And the oversized inserts have a, a thicker wire cross section and a special tap. So you can retap that hole and use uh, the oversized insert retaining the original uh, bolt thread pitch that you had to start. Uh, twin starts are exactly what they're saying. There is two inserts in one. Uh, the outer insert is used to uh, fasten into the hole and the inner insert will allow you to again retain the original bolt thread. Very good. Uh, components required for helicoil installation. Again, the inserts you've chosen, whether it's tang, tangless, free runner locking, uh, the uh, appropriate tool, hand or automated, uh, tang break off tool, which is pictured here, and uh, clean dry air source, which I think we already talked about. We went through this slide, we went the wrong way. We apologize. <laughs> it's worth mentioning again. Oh, sorry about that, folks. <laughs> what you see here is the uh, Helicoil Pneumatic Installation Tool 8510-1. This is the premier tool on the market, regardless of manufacturer. This is a high production tool. Uh, the other components pictured are uh, the uh, pre-winders, large and small adapters, which are all included in the uh, Helicoil 8520 combo kit. Keep in mind, this is a high production tool uh, when combined with the Helicoil tool holder and inserts on tape and reel, a skilled operator can perform three to 400 installations per hour. Uh, great return on your investment. Yeah, and also to mention, uh, coming up a little bit later, we have a video for everyone. And the video is going to show how to assemble this particular tool. Um, so stay tuned for that. So now I'd like to introduce a um, new uh, electric tool um, with the Helico family of tools. And this is a brushless installation tool designed for clean room assembly environments. And this tool satisf satisfies the semiconductor industry's stringent PPM limits of airborne oil particulates associated with the use of pneumatic tools. So again, um, designed for clean room assembly of, uh, environments. And some of the features and benefits are ease of installation when compressed air is not available. Also maintenance free, no lubrication required. It has an electric stop and this ensures the insert is installed at the correct depth with no over torquing. It has a long mandrel which uh, accommodates any length uh, of insert. Also a hex chuck um, which allows for install of screws. Quick change of inserts timed at five seconds. And also there's a readout of the installation and this re will reflect a pass or fail. And also you can um, hook up this tool to a computer and it will log your installations for you. 
Uh, also, it, it features a display with a slow ramp up and counter, and this prevents missed installation of the inserts. A fantastic tool. We have stock of this particular tool and are available um, to provide demos. Uh, so just contact, contact us and um, we'd be happy to set that up. We'll have our contact information on a slide a little bit later. Yeah, we have six of these tools in the field right now. They've been uh, going for about oh, six months now, I would say, to uh, six to eight months. And uh, customers are very happy with them. Uh, we just received another six tools. Um, we are the only ones, to my knowledge, that have these tools. Um, I will talk about the slow ramp up here that was mentioned. Thanks, Ann. So um, during installation, that slow ramp allows that insert to start uh, threading in a little bit slower, and then it speeds up to, to get the installation done quickly. OK, thank you. So let's get into some of the installation dues, recommendations, right, when you're um, inserting heel coil inserts. So it's important to always keep the installation tool perpendicular to the workpiece, the entire insert installation. Another thing to um, always keep in mind is maintain continuous contact between the nose of the pre-winder and the workpiece countersink indentation during the insert installation. Also, if you're using a pneumatic tool, be sure to verify the air pressure is set properly. The correct PSI is stamped on the body of the pre-winder, as you see here um, in this image, air 20 PSI. So different size inserts require a different um, air pressure setting. So be mindful of that. Um, and another installation do, it's important to always use a helicoil tool. Um, and here we're showing the beveled pre-winder nose piece and the arrows pointing to the beveled portion of that. Um, but a little story about um, the importance of using a helicoil tool. I had a customer who purchased tangless inserts from us and um, during the installation process, they were having difficulty. So I um, paid them a visit, took a look at um, their processes for the installation. And first off, I noticed it wasn't a helicoil tool. Um, but as soon as we got the correct helicoil tool into their hands, every insert was seamless. So a couple things with that is, yes, it's important to use a helical tool. Even though it may look the same, it's not. Also, um, for the tangless inserts, the tool has a tang blade in it. And if that tang blade isn't like new, it's not gonna catch the um, insert indentation and therefore it won't dry the insert in um, to the hole. So I'll go over that a little bit later also about the um, Tang blade. But yeah, heel coil tool using a heel coil tool is important. Another okay. installation do. Oh, sorry. Can you just go back one slide, please? Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but there's a big gap inside this uh, nose piece here. And mm -hmm. the reason that is, is for the strip feed. So for uh, faster installation, helicoil has inserts that are on a reel or tape that um, slides right through that gap hole right there and aligns the insert for proper installation. So it's a, a better way to, or I should say a faster way uh, for production uh, to get the helicoils uh, in line instead of placing them one at a time by hand. Yeah, thank you for that. And I'll um, have another slide. Well, here we are. This is showing you that um, in more of a full picture. So another installation do. So if you're using um, small range, so small size of inserts with a pneumatic tool in production level quantities, we highly recommend that you employ the use of a helicoil tool holder, as you see here. And this will allow ease of installation. The use of this tool um, will keep the tool perpendicular to the workpiece as we already talked about, and that's critical for success. But also, as John mentioned, um, this allows you to have the tape in real, as you see here. So the inserts are in that tape, so you're not having to pick them up and um, wind them in the, in the tool. 
So another installation due for you folks is if you're using a crank style tool, as you see here in this image, it's important to maintain consistent and deliberate rotations of the tool. And also, of course, um, as mentioned, maintain continuous contact between the nose of the pre-winder and the workpiece countersink indentation during the insert installation. And the arrows pointing to the um, beveled nose piece. And at the other end of the tool, Ann, there's that cylinder and um, okay. that is a set collar. So when you're installing inserts, you want to have them the same depth each time. And the depth of that is controlled, um, of course, in the engineering catalog, we'll, we'll give you that data as well. Um, so you wanna make sure that each one of them is to the correct depth each time. So that set collar, once you install the insert, you take the set collar, move it down, to the body of the um, pre-winder and then use a set screw to lock it into place. That way you make sure that each time um, you have the proper depth of insulation. Great, thank you. Um, so here is um, a picture of the Tangless uh, insert installation tool. So if you're using Tangless inserts, confirm that the Tang blade, as you see where the arrow is pointing to, um, confirm that that blade is like new because that's what's going to engage the tangless insert notch properly. Um, so yeah, important to keep that blade new. It's easy to replace them, very inexpensive. I'm sure someday very soon we'll have a video on how to change that blade. Sure. So Anne, um, also on this tool as well, you can control your depth. So just past the arrow there, past the black part, the silver piece there has a lock nut there that will uh, keep that depth control. So you just adjust that in order to um, move the depth. So if it's a three times diameter, you can just move it back. If it's a one times diameter, you just loosen that up and, and uh, turn that forward. That controls the depth of to make sure that each one of the inserts is the correct depth. Um, one thing I did want to mention was the uh, Q&A section. So at the bottom of your screen, if you'll take your mouse and hover over, you'll see a Q&A on the bottom where you can um, ask any of your questions. So that did come up uh, during the webinar here. So um, you can ask away and we'll get to that at the end of our webinar uh, and answer all of your questions, okay? Great, thank you. And now we'll pass it over to Carl for that helicoil factoid. Thank you, Ann. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of things that are worth mentioning about the helicoil inserts when they're received by the customer. Uh, they're packaged and delivered in what is known as a free state that is larger than the hole that they're intended to be installed into. In their free state, the inserts resemble and act like a spring, and the dimension can vary from one to the next. Helicoils, like springs, are always designed and manufactured to be a certain size once they are installed. The pitch is the distance measured from one coil to the next. The pitch, and therefore the length, is not fixed until the insert is installed. So you may receive a bag of inserts, and they will appear physically larger, either wider or longer than the tap hole they are intended for. Uh, this is not a problem once they pass through a uh, pre-winder, they are constricted down to the proper size. And there's also a condition called uh, spread length, where when the helicoil inserts are manufactured, some will appear longer than the others. They are all of the same size, and you can verify this by counting the number of coils. Yeah, great information, Carl. The other uh, thing that I wanted to tell everybody is what you're going to do is, if you want to gauge the hole, you gauge it with a pin gauge or with a a uh, thread gauge, uh, helicoil has these parts. Once the insert is installed, you do not thread gauge the helicoil insert. You only thread gauge the hole prior to the helicoil being installed. Great. As I mentioned earlier, helicoil installation issues are very rare, but they do occur from time to time. And there's a couple that we should, uh, we should point out. Um, one being the inserts bind while installing. Uh, again, going back to the necessity to use an STI cut tap in all cases, no roll taps, no cut taps of another manufacturer. STI cut tap are the only 
proper taps to use. So if you're having that issue, you wanna verify that a cut tap has been used, uh, gauge the hole. And if you've determined that the a cut tap was not used, retap the hole with the proper tap and uh, resume your installations. Yeah, one of the questions that came up, Carl, was about why they couldn't use a roll tap or forming tap. And it, you want the insert to sit all the way inside the um, cut thread, and that will seat the insert properly. Actually, you take a screw afterwards and screw it in for it to properly seat the insert. That way you're gonna achieve all of your uh, tensile strength uh, that you desire by using a helicoil insert. Correct. Uh, pneumatic tool stops or binds during installation. Uh, Ann had mentioned this in a couple of slides ago. Uh, generally that occurs when the air pressure is set too low. Uh, many customers will be installing multiple size inserts with the same tool on the same assembly and they need to be mindful as they increase the diameter of the inserts being installed that they are incrementally increasing the air pressure as well. So make sure that the air pressure is correct. It's stamped on the pre-winder and uh, resume your installations. Uh, tangless inserts do not install completely accompanied by a faint clicking noise. This again was something that Ann touched on. Uh, the, mandrel, the mandrel blades need to be like new. They need to be sharp for the uh, system to work properly. And after a number of installations, the blades will become warm. So uh, you need to swap those out on a regular basis. Uh, mandrel, uh, the blades are rel relatively inexpensive and swapping them out is a five minute process and you can resume your installations at that point. So yeah, they're relatively inexpensive. So uh, when you're purchasing your um, tool, go ahead and just purchase an extra blade for that. That way you're not going to hold up any uh, production if the tang does become worn or damaged, so it's, it will uh, be sure to catch the drive notch. Um, tanged inserts disengage from the mandrel and will not install to a full desired depth. This occurs generally when uh, the mandrel tang notch has become worn. Like the tang blades, the mandrel tang, the mandrel needs to be replaced about every two to 3,000 installations. Uh, it's a five minute process and uh, you can resume your installations error-free. Uh, the tool continues to run after the mandrel returns to the retracted position. This was the uh, most popular question on the, uh, on the poll. Uh, that is generally caused by a drive sleeve cushion being either worn or missing. Um, this occurs from time to time when you're swapping product out. Uh, spare drive sleeve cushions come in the combo kit as well as can be purchased separately. And again, about a five minute process to replace that uh, cushion and you can resume your installations. This will conclude the first portion of our webinar. Please stay with us. We're going to show you a short video uh, covering the 8520 combo kit, uh, the basic assembly of that tool and the proper procedure for uh, performing installations with that tool. Yeah, so here we go. Hi, my name is John Butler, and I'm with Carl Erickson. We're with the Olander Company. We're a fastener distributor, started in 1962. We have three locations in the United States, West Coast, Sunnyvale, California, Sacramento, California, and Woodenville, Washington. With over $8 million worth of inventory of standard fasteners and hardware, items. One of those items is Helicoil, and we're the largest stocking Helicoil distributor in the United States. So today we'll talk about the 8520 tool and the assembly and some of the issues that you might run into when you're putting the tool together. All right, so today we're going to talk about the 8520 Helicoil power installation kit. This is a combo kit that will do small inserts as well as large inserts with the two adapters that are on the inside. So as we open up the case, we have the drive motor itself. This motor will actually accept the small adapter and also the large adapter. It comes with all the wrenches that are included in order to uh, assemble the tool itself. One thing I will remind you is not to over tighten the tools. 
and it is left-hand thread. So the tool has a hex drive on the inside that slides into the small adapter, and again, left-hand thread to screw on the small adapter, and it's the same thing for the large adapter. Both come with a lock nut in order to lock in the front, uh, front assembly, the front end assembly, excuse me. So what we have here is, thank you, Carl, this is not included in the kit, and this is the front, front end assembly. And this assembly has spacers that are designed for the different lengths of the inserts. Now I'll just take this out, take the mandrel out, And I do want to remind you that this does have the part number on it for the size, so it'll say it's a quarter 20. And it will also have the air pressure for setting the regulator, and we'll get to that later. So we do have the spacer. We do have two additional spacers depending upon the size of the insert. So a quarter 20 insert is going to have the one spacer, it says one diameter on it. The one and a half diameter or length uh, insert will have the one and a half diameter spacer, and then the uh, three diameter spacer as well. We also have shims, and these shims will allow you to adjust the tool, the depth of the insert going into um, the parent material very slightly. And also with this tool, so I put this back together for me, on the inside of this tool there is a shutoff, so after the, the uh, fastener is installed, it will automatically shut off. And that is held in together by the bumper or cushion on the inside, which Carl is showing us here. These urethane cushions, once worn or missing, will not allow the tool to shut off, and it will damage the tool. So you want to make sure that that cushion is on the inside. So on the um, mandrel itself, we have a roll pin here that will fit inside the groove inside the tool. So for assembly, we'll just slide it in, and we'll slide over the left-hand thread lock nut. Now with the inserts, when we go ahead and put them in one at a time bulk, we just slide them into here. The, once we hook it up to air, the mandrel will retract into the tool and shut off and we place the bulk insert inside here. There's also a slot here, and that is for the strip feed for the uh, quicker installation of the helicoil inserts, okay? We also have a bevel here on this side, and that bevel will uh, line up with the counterboard hole that we've tapped in the parent material. Everything inside the uh, kit we have the hose, you have a regulator, you also have the uh, oil and a gauge, all the fittings and um, all the adapters for uh, assembly. So one of the more important aspects of correct helicoil installation is proper tool alignment. Carl, can you just demonstrate that for us, please? Yes, John, thank you. It is always important to maintain perpendicularity with the workpiece and the tool as the installation is being performed. Depress the trigger, hold the tool to the workpiece as the ins insert is being installed, release and lift. This is essential for making sure that the installation is performed properly, especially important on smaller diameter inserts. What may be recommended is the addition of the helicoil tool holder, part number 23537, to accomplish this task more easily. So there you have it, the Helicoil 101 tool installation and assembly. So we're glad you joined us today. We are available 24-7 at olander.com. We appreciate your tuning in, and we look forward to having more videos for you in the near future. Thank you very much, Carl. Thank you, John. Have a great day. All right, well, sorry, the, uh, the sound was a little bit off on that one. Um, oh. We can email everybody over um, this webinar as well after we're done, and you can get a copy that we uh, won't have any bandwidth issues. <laughs> so uh, we do have over 70 people joining us today, so we thank you much.
Um, I want to talk a little bit about our website. We will be getting to the question and answer session uh, in, in a little bit as well, but uh, the new website we have for Orlander. Um, you can get 3D CAD models and 2D drawings, as well as our uh, blog. You can sign up for a blog and great, great information um, on our website for that. We do have a cross-reference section on our website, so you can put in a popular uh, supplier's part number inside there, and it'll come up with the Olander part number. Of course, all helical part numbers is what we use, um, so those will be easily uh, accessed. And in the forefront here, you're seeing a, a picture of the 3D CAD model. You can take that CAD model and put it into your software to make sure that the insert will fit properly. Um, also, 2D CAD models is what we're, or uh, specification sheets, as you see in the background there, uh, to make sure that when you're uh, receiving these parts in, that they're the correct thread size, correct length and diameter. Um, we have over 40,000 items that are inside our um, catalog per se in our online portfolio. We do have plenty more items and we keep adding these parts into the offering for CAD and, and spec sheets. So um, that number of 40,000 will continue to grow. Um, we also get uh, tips on there for about uh, installation of heel coil inserts and other parts. So. Uh, stay tuned for that. And of course, e-commerce will be coming very shortly. Uh, within the next few months, we hope to have that all completed and uh, available for everybody to use. Well, thank you for joining us today, John and Ann and I appreciate you uh, spending some time with us. Uh, we encourage you to contact us if you have any questions about the content of this webinar, any questions about helicoil products in general, or any other commodities that uh, Olander provides. All of our contact information is reflected there. And please stay tuned for the Q&A, which is coming up next. Okay, great. John, what do we have in the queue for questions? Well, thank you. Thanks, Carl. Um, so some of the things we wanna point yeah. out, the different colors of inserts. Um, so one of the colors for a locking uh, helicoil insert. So what is a locking screw thread insert? Uh, that will lock the screw in place. Um, helicoil inserts, once they're installed, are per se locked into the hole, but they also offer a um, hex um, wire shape in the center of the helicoil insert, and that is to lock the screw into place. So you don't need to work with a patched screw or put any Loctite or anything else in there. Mm -hmm. um, that screw locking insert in the in series is a red dye and that is a printer's ink and it's easily removed um, with alcohol. So you can uh, make sure that you remove that if you want to make sure that it's, it's not on the, uh, in, in the parent material. Um, green, they have green inserts that are CAD plated and we also offer the dry film lube and also primer free, uh, different uh, installations or different aspects of the inserts for different applications. Um, another person asked, how do you gauge an installed insert? So um, talked about that a little earlier. Uh, you do want to gauge the tap hole itself with a helicoil thread gauge, okay? So there are um, different tolerances. So you're going to use uh, a, a different tolerance insert for what the application calls for, but you do not gauge the actual helicoil once it's installed. Um, if you're worried about not being the right insert, as Carl mentioned earlier, you can go ahead and count the coils and that's 90 degree from the tang. And that will uh, make sure you have the right in, uh, insert. So as Carl length, the spread length on, on those inserts does vary, um, but they're all the same size. Uh, you just count the coils to confirm. Uh, let's see. Um, why is the helicoil diamond wire shaped? And what does that provide? Carl, you want to talk about that for me? Well, it just provides additional strength uh, and retention value. And that design has been around since helicoil was invented in the, in the late 30s. Uh, it has proven to be the strongest, most uh, robust wire insert on the market and uh, is the finest product out there. Let's 
see here. I have one uh, here that's interesting. It's high, uh, thanks for the great info. Uh, lately, Stanley changed the mandrels for pneumatic tools. Black color replaces the bronze color. What are the differences? We find that the black mandrels um, wear out more quickly compared to the bronze mandrels. Um, I, they have, um, I've noticed the change in, in the colors of the, of the parts. I'm unaware of any different materials being used, um, but I'm happy if you, Ty, if you will go ahead and email me or uh, send your question and answer with your email, I'll be able to get back with you uh, with a more suitable answer. Great question. Um, does the pre-winder come with many different mat uh, material than metal? Yes. So Brian asks about that and they do have um, a plastic um, pre-winder for the crank style and they also have the metal. Um, the metal pre-winder has that 120 degree um, bevel at the end. That will fit nicely into the 120 degree countersunk pole. And that's why we would want to prefer that you would use the metal. They're almost identical in price, not much difference. So um, make sure that you do order the part with an M on the end that will stand for metal pre-winder, but they are in plastic as well. Let's see, um, let's see any uh, published online article that discusses not using formed taps. But inside the helical catalog, it, it gives you what you're what they want you to use, and that is the cut tap. Um, I will go ahead and research that, and uh, of course, uh, send me your email through this uh, chat session or through the question, question and answers. We'll be able to contact you with that information. Oh, Carl, um, this one is uh, talking about small diameter tangless and hole passes and go no gauge, but uh, seems to have some extra friction. Uh, tangless mandrel is new and shows no signs of wear. Any tips? So this is what you talked about earlier about the uh, uh, hole size and uh, um, yeah, it, it is critical to 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 always gauge the hole to the maximum end of the minor diameter. That gives you the most uh, room to install. If you're using a if you're using a primer free. Uh, insert, sometimes we would recommend a, a light, a, a drop of uh, rubbing alcohol to add lubricity as it is being installed. That will usually lessen the friction. Uh, but it, it, just go back to the basics. Make sure that you're using a cut tap, uh, gauge to the max end of the minor diameter, and uh, try a little drop of rubbing alcohol as you're doing the installation. And if you continue to have issues, please reach out to me and I'd be happy to talk to you uh, about how to correct that or come out and see you if you're local. Yeah, and that also um, answers Rebecca's question about the red dye. What is it? Um, and it seems to, uh, she has better uh, success uh, using paraffin wax as a lubricant. Uh, is, is this legitimate? So um, the red dye is just an identification. So it's telling you that this is a locking and that is inch size. It's not a metric. So if you see that the center um, coil is uh, a hex shape um, and it's no red dye, then you'd know it would be metric versus an inch size. And Carl just mentioned about the alcohol. So you can take that red dye off with alcohol, but taking that insert and just dipping it in a little bit of alcohol prior to installation will give it a little bit of lubricity. Uh, to get that into place. So we don't want anything that's going to remain, uh, remain and the paraffin wax might remain inside that uh, product, whereas the alcohol is just going to evaporate. Right, Carl? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to mention, John, that we're at um, 1146. So um, want to be mindful of the time. All right. So um, I will go ahead and if um, I have some great questions here, if you can go ahead and uh, provide us uh, an email. So we do have in the background here, we have Carl Erickson at Olander. So it's C Erickson at Olander.com. 
and mm -hmm. slates at Olander, or my uh, email address is jbutler at olander.com, or please go to our website at olander.com, and inside there, there'll be a chat and an RFQ section. And you can contact us there with any of your questions, and we're happy to answer these. We, we hope we provided you with some great information today. And um, during the survey at the, uh, we'll be yes. emailed out to you. Mm -hmm. If you can go ahead and, and reply back to us, that will help us uh, to make sure that we provide you with great information and, and other, other webinars that you might be interested in. Anything yeah, I actually think that the survey is coming up right as we end. So um, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, anything from you, anything else? No, I think we've covered it. I just yeah, want to thank everybody. Thank everybody for participating, John and Ann, and thank you for all the customers for participating. And we look forward to speaking with you soon. Yeah, thanks everyone. Have a great day. Bye now. <laughs>